Alright guys, um, next video we're going to talk about is we're going to look at compound interest. Um, we already discussed in a previous video simple interest using the formula to calculate I equals PRT. Um, to calculate how much interest would be earned based on the principal, um, the interest rate, and the amount of years that the money was deposited into the account. Um, now we're going to look at compound interest. We're going to use the same uh, variables. We need to know the time, uh, we need to know the interest rate, we need to know the principal. Um, so I'm going to show you the formula we're going to use for compound interest, then we'll go through one or two problems just so you can see how it works to help you with the homework um, if you need it. Huh? So the formula for compound interest is as follows, A equals P parentheses 1 plus R exponent of T. It's really important that you put it into the calculator exactly as you see it here. You need these parentheses. Uh, we need to make sure that we use the exponent to calculate it as well. Uh, if, you do, if you put this as a, a number and multiply it without it being an exponent, you're going to get it wrong. If you leave out the parentheses also, you'll get it wrong. Uh, um, A represents the total amount of money in the account. Um, so what, it, what that's doing is it's, it's adding the principal and the interest together, combining them to give you the total. So if you were to be asked to find the interest, we would find the total amount in the account uh, and then have to subtract out the principal, and that would give you the amount of interest that was earned during that time. Uh, principal, R interest rate, T time and years. So let's look at um, this problem. I'm going to leave the board up there, and I'm going to do it on a, on a slate. Uh, so it says Mr. Kilpatrick deposits 500 into a savings account with an interest rate of 5%. The interest rate is compounded annually. How much money will be in the account after 10 years? Uh, so we're going to use our formula, A equals P R, sorry, 1 plus R, not R plus 1, plus R exponent T. I always suggest writing your variables off to the side and um, identifying the variables before plugging them into the formula. So the first thing I want to know is what are they asking me to find? Well, it says how much money will be in the account. We just stated that A represents the total amount in the account. That would represent the money in the account. So A is what we're asking to be found. So I'm going to assign A my variable of X. My principal is the, um, the original amount deposited. So here it says deposits 500. So this is my principal. My interest rate here it says interest rate of 5%. Remember, we always got to convert that to decimal form. Uh, so 5%. we got to move the decimal two places. So that becomes 0 0.05. Um, how much after 10 years? So my time is 10 years. So principal, 500. R, 0 0.05. Time, 10 years. So now I'm going to take these values. I'm going to put, input them into the formula. And then I'm going to use the calculator, multiply, um, and solve. So x equals 500 times 1 plus 0 0.05 exponent of 10. Uh, so when I put that into the calculator, I'm going to get um, x equal. Uh, sorry, yep, x equals. And let me just put it in here, calculator real quick. Sorry, 500 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.05 parentheses, x point 10. So I'm going to get 814.447. Uh, so my calculator says I'm going to get 814 on and 45 cents. I'm always going to round to do two decimal places because it's money. So I'm going to round to do t two decimal places. So how much money is in the account? Well, there's $814.45. Now again, if they ask us to find the principal, I'm, I'm sorry, the interest, how much interest was earned, I would subtract $500 from this to find out how much interest was earned on this account. Uh, so we're using the formula A equals P times one odd to the exponent of T to find out how much money is in the account using compounded interest. Uh, let's look at another example. Um, many accounts that you have that use compound interest, what happens is over time, you deposit money annually. 
So I might put $1,500 in the first year and then I add every year I add money to the account. So let's look at how that would solve. So this says Ms. Simpson deposits $1,500 in her retirement account, earning 3.7% compounded annually. If she continues to put $1,500 in the account each year, how much will her account balance be after five years? So let's see, year one, her balance was $1,500. That's how much, I'm sorry, her balance is zero. She deposits $1,500. Her new balance is $1,500. Let's fight figure out how much interest she would have and what the total would be. So we're going to use um, A equals P1 plus R exponent of T. So my A is unknown. My P is 1500, that's how much she's putting in. My R is 3.7%. So I'm going to convert that to a decimal. My T. So here I'm just trying to find out in year one how much interest she made. So I'm just going to have a time here for one year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to do this each year to find out what her, how much interest and what her new balance is because she's putting more money in each year. So I'm going to get my calculator and put in 1500. Um, let me just kind of fill this in real quick. So A wrap X equals 1500, 1 plus 0 0.037, 1. Huh. So let's put that in the calculator, 1500, 1 plus 0 0.037, 1. And that's going to give me $1,555.50. So her interest that she earned was $55.50. Huh? Um, and so her total is $1,555.50. So now when I look at year two, I wonder how much money she has in her account up to two years. So year two, her balance is $1,555.50. She's depositing 1500 So her new balance, I'm going to add those two together. So her new balance is 3,055.50. Um, and now I want to find out her interest and her new total. So I'm going to use the same value. So now my, my P is 3,055.50 instead of 1500. One plus, I've got the same interest here, 37 to the power of one. Let's find out how much interest she earns in the second year. One plus point zero three seven. Close the parentheses, power of one. So her total is three one six eight oh three. So her new total is three one six eight oh three. So if I wanted to find the principal, I'm gonna subtract this number minus this number. So minus three zero five five point five equals one hundred and twelve fifty four. So the interest that she earned was one hundred and twelve dollars and fifty four cents. Right. I'm gonna go out to one more year. Right. So instead of going out to five years, we'll go out to three years. So as I fill out my year three, my starting balance here is thirty one sixty eight oh three. I'm depositing $1,500. So my new balance, I got to add those two numbers together, just like I did here. So 316803 plus 1,500 is 4668. 6680. So again, 4668.03 times 1 plus 0.037 to the first power. Right, we're going to solve, find out how much is in my account. Four six six eight point zero three one plus point zero three seven to the power of one, and that's going to be four eight four zero seventy five. So I get four eight four zero seventy five. So that's my total in my account. That number goes there. 
So my interest, I'm going to subtract these two numbers, 484075 minus 4,668.0. And that gives me 172.72. So my interest was 172.72 that I earned. Huh? So if I wanted to go out to five years, I would just continue to follow that pattern. Um, so each year, my I, after I deposit, I take my total, I bring it down here as my new balance to start the next year. I'm depositing the same amount of money. I add those two together to get my new balance. Then I take that new balance, that's my principal now, um, and I'm gonna use that to find my new total. Subtract those two numbers and that would give me the interest for that year. Huh? Again, guys, we're just using compound interest. We're using the formula A equals P one plus R to the T power. Right? It's compound interest versus simple interest. I guess, see you in class, best of luck.